channel so today is not really a a how-to or a truck video or anything like that uh, just kind of been making some improvements to our uh, workbench setup um, but we are going to use um, a little different approach to our our bench top so we got this three quarter inch or 23 30 seconds um, plywood and I did this because it's it's pretty thick we still got some supports to to put up under here um, but I thought I would try uh, this Raptor liner on on the bench top and see how it holds up. Um, we were going to use this kit to spray some stuff on the on our uh, truck, um, but I think because this is a black kit, I think we're going to maybe go with more of a paint match type deal, um, and we're kind of iffy about that to uh, really kind of undecided what we're going to do with the truck. So we're going to go ahead and mix up um, one of these. We we bought a a regulator from uh, basically Harbor Freight just to screw into the gun so that we can regulate the air pressure. Um, I think about 60 PSI is what it calls for, I do believe. Um, so we're gonna try spraying it at 60 PSI. One thing I wanna mention here is um, depending on the spray pattern, the pressure, all that stuff, um, you can't really adjust the spray pattern on, on the nozzle itself, um, but what you can do is adjust the distance from the work piece, um, and you can do test sprays on a piece of paper. So we're gonna go ahead and do a test spray, um, and we're gonna try to make the, the bench top, I think, more like a um, like a truck bed liner uh, with the little like non-skid or the, the ridges in it, um, or the raised portions, just because I, I do kind of like that um, texture. So we'll spray it that way, but uh, you can mess around with the pressures and things like that coming out of the gun. We did get a uh, water, like a water separator, air water separator. Um, that's on the, the compressor. It's a 26 gallon Craftsman compressor that we're using. So you just wanna make sure you have enough capacity to continue spraying so that your compressor will kick on as you spray. Otherwise you'll be waiting a while. And this stuff only has a pot life of like, I think it's like 20, 20 to 30 minutes, I believe, once you mix it. Only mix one bottle at a time. Um, you'll fill up to the line for the hardener, and then you'll take the cap off, slip it onto the gun, and then start spraying. So let's get to it and see how we can get this, uh, get this bench top looking. All right, so we just added our hardener um, up to the line here, and now we're gonna shake it pretty good for the, the first couple minutes or so. We're going to go ahead and insert it into the gun. Hook our air up to it. And we're going to start spraying.
Alright guys, so that's pretty much the countertop sprayed. We'll go ahead and uh, demask it and all that stuff and see how it looks. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is demask it once it's dried because uh, you'll take all the all the tape will kind of stick to it and all that stuff. So you can kind of start demasking it. Not right away, but I'd wait a few minutes and then you should be good. All right, so we're just gonna let it dry. We've got a little touch up spots that we need to do with the uh, with the countertop itself where it's kind of starting to come up. This piece was a little bowed, so we're gonna screw it in from the bottom, I think, uh, with some pocket screws. But aside from that, like, Everything pretty much came loose pretty good. Um, so no issues with like runs or anything like that. I'd say uh, one bottle did this. Um, and it's got a pretty, pretty good texture to it if you can see it there. Um, we didn't do any type of sanding or anything on this uh, piece of wood um, as it was pretty rough. It's just kind of like OSB. Uh, for like sheathing on on the outside of your house um, But it was cheap. It was like 20 bucks for the the four by eight sheet We cut it in half and then uh, made it so that the centers lined up on the center of our cabinet um, Here in the center we anchored them to the wall and all that so this this gave us pretty good um, drawer space and some other places to put things and then we got these um, Power strips from Harbor Freight on sale uh, this weekend so if it's something that you guys are looking to do, um, we just wanted extra outlets to be able to plug things in wherever, uh, not necessarily use all of these outlets at the same time. So let's just clarify that. Um, but aside from that, uh, the plan is we've got one US General Toolbox uh, here. The plan is to put another one over here um, and then have that be our, our workspace for whatever we're gonna do. Um, this stuff should be oil resistant um, and UV resistant and all that stuff like you would have on your bed. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to try it out on the countertops on these and not have to pay for a super expensive countertop that, you know, is just going to get messed up. So it's a good garage, um, garage project. And uh, hopefully it turns out once it dries and it, it functions the way that it should, um, being that it's on wood. So this just gives you guys an idea of maybe what you can do. Um, with the Raptor liner, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some stuff on the truck with it as well. Um, we've got about two bottles of it left, um, so I'm not sure if we'll do our, we might do our side steps or something with it, but um, I hope this, uh, this kind of gives you guys some ideas um, on the Raptor liner stuff, and, and we'll get more uh, in-depth videos with the Raptor liner on a vehicle. So thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day.